Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to discuss a very important topic for the undergraduates as well as the postgraduates in the subject prosthodontics, that is principles of tooth preparation. According to GPT-9, the tooth preparation can be defined as the process of removal of deceased and or healthy enamel, dentine and cementum to shape a tooth to receive a restoration. So it is a process of removal of deceased or healthy enamel, dentine and cementum to shape a tooth to receive a restoration. That is according to GPT-9. These are the various components of a fixed partial denture. This one is the connector. This is the pontic and this is the retainer. Okay. And here, this is the edentulous ridge and this one and this is the abutment. Okay. These are the abutments and here this abutment is prepared. So, abutment preparation. So, these are the components of a fixed partial denture. What is this? This is actually a full veneer or full coverage or complete crown. It covers the entire clinical crown of a tooth. And the example here is metal ceramic crown. Okay. And this one is the partial veneer or partial coverage crown, which covers only portions of clinical crown. And the facial surface is usually left unveneered. Here is the facial surface. And this is the partial veneer or partial coverage crown. These are the inlays. What are inlays? They are intracoronal restrictions. Here, minimal to moderate extensions, which are made of gold alloy or a ceramic material. So, these are the inlays. They are intracoronal restrictions. What is an onlay? It is also an intracoronal restriction with an occlusal veneer. Okay, here it is a occlusal veneer, and this is a onlay. Okay. And here it is the laminate veneer. It is a thin layer of porcelain or cast ceramic which is bonded to the facial surface of a tooth with a resin. So this is the laminate veneer. Okay. Here it is the minimal preparation. It is required for preparation of a laminate veneer. And this is thin layer of porcelain or cast ceramic. And which is, which is bonded to a facial surface of a tooth with a resin. Okay. And there are five elements to a good diagnostic workup in preparation for a fixed prosthodontic treatment, which are the proper health history should be taken, temporomandibular joint and occlusal evaluation should be done, intraoral examination, thorough intraoral examination should be done, then the diagnostic cast and full mouth radiographs. Okay. So coming to the main part of this lecture, that is principles of tooth preparation. So, which are the principles of tooth preparation? According to various authors, there are various principles. Which are they? According to contemporary fixed prosthodontics first South Asia edition by Professor Stephen F. Rosenstiel, the principles can be biologic, mechanical and aesthetic. So, what is biologic consideration? Actually, the biologic considerations, it affect the health of the oral tissues. That is the biologic consideration. That is conservation of tooth structure, avoidance of over contouring, suprasensible margins, harmonious occlusion, and protection against the tooth fracture. What is mechanical? Actually, they affect the integrity and durability of the restoration. So, which are they? Retention form, resistance form and deformation. And what is aesthetic? Actually, there is a minimum display of metal and maximum thickness of porcelain, then porcelain occlusal surfaces and subgingival margins. Overall, the aesthetic considerations affect the patient's appearance. That is aesthetic. So, these are the three main principles according to the Rosenstein textbook. Okay. Contemporary fixed prosthodontics. That is biologic, mechanical, and aesthetic. So, this one is the shaded area that is the optimal preparation. What is this? 
it enables the fabrication of a restoration which satisfies biologic mechanical and aesthetic requirements okay so according to dental clinics of north america that is by goodacre et al in 2004 provide some guidelines for the tooth preparation which are the total occlusal convergence occlusal cervical or incisor cervical dimension ratio of occlusal cervical and facial lingual dimension circumferential form of the prepared tooth reduction uniformity reduction depth finish line location and line angle form so these are the various guidelines for tooth preparation according to dcna so according to fundamentals of fixed prosthodontics by herbert t schillingberg the principles of tooth preparation can be preservation of tooth structure retention and resistance forms structural durability marginal integrity and preservation of periodontia so coming to the biology considerations what are they conservation of tooth structure avoidance of over contouring supra gingival margins harmonious occlusion protection against the tooth fracture so the prevention of damage during tooth preparation that is first biology construction let's discuss through that in this picture it shows here the actually iatrogenic damage to an adjacent tooth is a common error in dentistry tipping the diamond unnecessarily away from the adjacent proximal surface is a common error here the damage to the adjacent teeth is prevented by positioning the diamond so that a thin lip or fin of enamel is retained between the rotary instrument and the adjacent tooth during the reduction of proximal surface here the diamond is directed in this way okay and note that the orientation of this diamond which parallels to the long axis of the premolar here is the premolar and this is parallel to the uh, this diamond is parallel to the long axis of the premolar in this picture here the thin tapering diamond is used to produce a lip of enamel for protection okay here is lip or fin of enamel for protection and in this picture it shows the proximal reduction which almost complete and here the enamel was maintained mesial to the path of the diamond as the reduction progressed okay here it is almost complete proximal reduction so iatrogenic damage is a common error in dentistry that is adjacent tooth damage is common error in dentistry In this picture it shows the metal matrix band which is used to protect the adjacent tooth. So coming to the soft tissue protection here mouth mirror is used to protect the tongue during the tooth preparation. Okay. Here the usage of mouth mirror during the tooth preparation and this is used to protect the tongue and as well as to retract or displace the cheek. okay and it reduces the risk of injury coming to the prevention prevention of damage to pulp here it is a tooth anatomy it shows enamel dentin this one is the pulp so this is the pulpal anatomy okay so great care is needed to prevent pulpal injuries also during the fixed prosthodontic procedures especially significant amount of tooth structure being removed and selection of various techniques and materials which reduce the risk of injury is very important during tooth preparation okay okay in this picture it shows the tooth preparation which must account for the geometry of the pulp chamber also okay so the pulp size can be evaluated on a radiograph and it decreases with the age so this one is the maxillary central incisor with the metal ceramic crown preparation here's the 
maxillary lateral incisive with the metal ceramic crown preparation and this one is the maxillary canine with a pin ledge preparation. Okay, here the dashed lines which represent the pulp chamber structure at various ages. These are the ages shown. Okay. In this table, it shows the various dimensions of pulp and coronal contour. Here, up to age 50, that is in 10 to 50 years of uh, age range, it decreases more, that is coronal length decreases more occlusal cervically than facio-lingually. 12.1, 11.5, 11.2, 10.8, that is the decreasing order of coronal length occlusal cervically than the facio-lingually. And the average pulpal dimensions have been related to the coronal contour are presented in this table and the previous figure. Okay. Coming to the causes of injury, which are the causes of injury? Actually, considerable heat should be generated during the tooth preparation. That is, first one is temperature, then any chemical action of some materials which causes pulpal damage to and also a bacterial action. Okay. So, what is the temperature? Actually, considerable heat is generated by friction between a rotary instrument and the surface being prepared. So, in this graph, it shows the pulpal temperature rise during the tooth preparation. So, this is the starting level. Here, it is decrease in pulp temperature and this is increase in pulp temperature. This is the zero level. This is the positive and this is negative. Okay. Here, the rotary instrument contact is here and this is the tooth contact. Okay. So, this one is the safe range and this is the critical range. And here the there are four groups. Which are, which are they? Group 1, group 2, group 3 and group 4. What is group 1? Group 1 is actually air turbine and water cooled. Group 2 is air turbine and dry. Group 3 is low speed water cooled. And group 4 is low speed dry. So here it is it shows the critical range that is dry dry groups that shows the critical range and most critical is the group 4 that is low speed and dry. Okay this is this shows the critical range and here all others show safe range. Okay. And this picture shows the Various scanning electron micros, micrographs of rotary instruments. This is the unused diamond rotary instrument. And this is the unused carpet. Here it is worn diamond rotary instrument. And this is the diamond rotary instrument particles which have fractured at the level of binder. So excessive pressure, high rotational speeds and the type, shape and condition of the cutting, cutting instrument may all increase generated heat. Okay. And this picture here the high speed hand piece. Then with the high speed hand piece a feather light intermittent touch allows efficient removal of tooth material with minimal heat generation. Even with the lightest touch the tooth overheats unless a water spray is used. And the spray must be accurately directed at the area of contact between the tooth and rotary instrument. So, here the proper direction and this one is the improperly directed, improperly directed water spray. So, here it is the proper use of water spray which directed towards the tip of the diamond. And this is the improperly directed water spray. And this picture, it, it also washes away debris, which is very important because rotary instrument clogging which reduces the cutting efficiency. So, here it is a clogging of, on the tapered tip of a diamond after one molar tooth preparation. It reduces the cutting efficiency. So, summarizing the prevention of damage during tooth preparation, adjacent teeth, that is iatrogenic damage, metal matrix band, Leave a slight lip or fin of proximal enamel. Then soft tissue protection, 
careful retraction of lips and cheeks, care to protect the tongue when the lingual surface of mandibular molars prepared by using mouth mirrors. Then pulp, it is that is temperature, then chemical action of cements and the bacterial action through micro leakage. Coming to the conservation of tooth structure. Here, there is a considerable amount of care is needed when the tooth is prepared for a complete crown. Okay, here the here there is a considerable amount of care to be taken when the tooth is prepared for a complete crown because the extensive nature of the reduction with many dentinal tubules sectioned. And each tubule will communicate directly with the dental pulp. This is the dental pulp. So each dentinal tubule will directly communicate with the dental pulp. And maximum dentin thickness should be maintained. Here is the maximum dentin thickness. It should be maintained. That is very very important. According to Dowden in here, his journal, any damage to the odontoblastic process would adversely affect the cell nucleus at the dentin pulp interface, no matter how far from the nucleus it occurred. Okay. So what is the preservation of tooth structure? According to M.M. M. Devan, the perpetual preservation of what remains is more important than the meticulous replacement of what is lost. According to him, care should be taken to prevent excessive tooth preparation. And there should be minimal possible reduction done to obtain the required characteristics. Grossly required decayed teeth should be retained with the help of a dowel course, cast post and on lace etc. So, perpetual preservation of what remains is more important than the meticulous replacement of what is lost. Okay, so here there is a minimal possible reduction should be done. That is Divine's dictum. Okay. So, there are certain conservation guidelines which are the first one is about the coverage. Use of partial coverage rather than the complete coverage restoration. So, partial coverage restorations is much better than the complete coverage restoration. So, here the conservation of tooth structure is more in partial coverage restorations. Then margin placement that is supragingival is better than the subgingival margins. Then the preparation of teeth with minimum practical convergence angle between the axial walls. Then the occlusal surface reduction it must follow anatomic planes. And it produces the uniform thickness in the restoration. Then the preparation of the Axial surface reduction in case of tilted teeth that is orthodontically reposition. Okay. So, first one is that use of partial coverage rather than the complete coverage restriction. This is the case showing congenitally missing lateral incisors which were replaced by using two simple three unit fixed dental processes. This pictures okay in these three pictures that's A, B, and C. This is the picture showing the fixed dental process that is two simple three unit FDP. Okay. In this case, here missing canine tooth as well as two congenitally missing lateral incisors. In this case, much greater restorative challenge than the situation in part A. Here it necessitates 8 unit processes. So less reduction in case of case 1 and more reduction in case of case 2. Okay, So 8 unit FPD is to be given in this case and here 2, 3 unit simple FPD should be given. So in the first case the conservation of tooth structure by using partial coverage restorations and in this case they are used as a fixed dental prosthetic abutments to replace congenitally missing lateral incisors. Okay. 
Coming to the preparation of teeth with minimum practical convergence angle or taper between axial walls. This picture shows the teeth prepared with more taper will not be conservative. So here the taper is more and it should not be conservative. Okay. And in this case excessive taper which results in the considerable loss of tooth structure. Here the cross hatched area it shows loss of tooth structure. Here the excessive taper occurs. And this picture shows the cylinders with minimal taper produces excellent frictional resistance. So here it is the minimal taper and here the excellent frictional resistance is there. Okay. Here the taper is small and here very much taper. Okay. So tooth prepared follow, uh, must be conservative. Okay. This is the preparation of occlusal surface. So that the reduction follows anatomic planes and produces uniform thickness in the restriction. Here the tooth preparation which following the anatomic planes will be conservative. And this is the preparation of occlusal surface so that the reduction follows anatomic planes and produces uniform thickness in the restriction. Okay, here it is anatomically prepared occlusive surface which result in the adequate clearance without excessive tooth reduction. This one. Okay. Here, anatomically prepared occlusive surface. A flat occlusive preparation which will result in either insufficient clearance or excessive amount of reduction. Okay. If it is flat, then it will result in insufficient clearance or excessive amount of reduction. Okay. So minimally required clearances are for buccal cusp which is 1.5 mm, lingual cusp 1 mm and marginal ridges and fossae 1 mm. This is the misaligned abutment tooth which may be difficult or impossible to prepare for a fixed dental prosthesis abutment and it provides poor support. Here Tilted mandibular molar was uprighted with a continuous flexible wire. And this is the progress after one month. And this is the uprighting essentially completed two months late. Here uniform tooth reduction is conservative of tooth structure. There, there is a path of placement which should coincide with the long axis of the tooth. This is the long axis of the tooth and the path of placement should be coincide with this long axis of the tooth. And for a mandibular molar, it is typically inclined 9 to 14 degrees lingually. This is 9 degree. Okay. And preparing such a tooth with the path of placement which is perpendicular to the occlusal plane of the mandibular arch, it is a common clinical error that results in additional unnecessary removal of tooth structure. Here it is the cross hatched area. So this is the most common clinical error which result in the additional unnecessary removal of tooth structure. So uniform tooth reduction is conservative of a tooth structure. Okay. So in this picture it shows the malaligned teeth. Here the malaligned teeth. Here measly tipped molar which necessitate additional removal of tissue on the mesial aspect of the molar abutment to achieve Compatible path of placement for a planned fixed dental process. So, more reduction should be done in mesial area of this abutment, this molar abutment. Okay. If the molar abutment is orthodontically uprighted before tooth preparation, then the crown preparation can be more conservative. So, here less tooth preparation should be done. And here it is a more. Okay. This is the axial surface reduction in case of tilted teeth that is orthodontically repositioning. Coming to the selection of a margin geometry that is conservative and also compatible with the other principles of tooth preparation. That is here in this picture it shows the shoulder margin and the chamfer margin. This one is the chamfer margin and this is shoulder margin. So for aesthetic restrictions to be planned to achieve sufficient material thickness is important. Okay, for a lifelike appearance. 
hence the shoulder margin is indicated but it is much less conservative than a chamfer margin so if it is a metal then we are planning for a metal restoration then chamfer margin should be done and it is more conservative than a shoulder margin so for aesthetic restorations shoulder margin is indicated okay here it is the avoidance of unnecessary apical extension of the preparation which would result in loss of additional tooth structure so in this picture it shows the apical extension of the preparation can necessitate additional tooth reduction because coronal diameter becomes smaller and in this picture it shows the preparations for periodontally involved teeth here considerable reduction needed if the margins are to be placed subgingivally for the aesthetic reasons here the supra gingival margins are preferred where applicable so in the most of cases supra gingival margins are preferred okay so coming to the considerations affecting future dental health improper tooth preparation may have various adverse effects on long term dental health so what are the considerations axillary reduction margin placement and margin adaptation so here this is the axillary reduction axillary reduction plays an important role in securing space for adequate thickness of a restorative material so in this picture it shows the inadequate axillary reduction here it will cause thin walls and a weak restoration okay so thin walls of casting which is subjected to distortion and here in this picture bulbous over contoured restoration is okay here a disastrous effect on the periodontia okay in this picture it shows the unhealthy gingival tissue as a result of over contoured restoration here the over contoured restoration which will lead to unhealthy gingival tissue and here the which shows the tooth preparation which are under reduced okay the under reduced preparations are there and here the restorations are recontoured then the gingival health returns okay here the picture shows the tooth preparation with adequate axillary reduction okay here the adequate axillary reduction which will allow development of properly contoured embrasures tissue is conserved through the use of partial coverage and supra gingival margins where possible so in these two pictures Uh, there is adequate axial reduction okay then preparing furcation areas here the furcation area so while preparing the furcation areas adequately it is very important this arrow mark shows the adequate furcation preparation and otherwise the restoration is excessively contoured which makes plaque control difficult and here the additional preparation of the buccal axial wall of a smaller to allow improved access for plaque control in the furcation area okay this picture shows the inadequate axillary reduction which will require over contoured restoration so here the axillary reduction is adequate and here inadequate axillary reduction and here it will require over contoured restoration so coming to the marginal integrity the restoration can survive in the biologic environment of oral cavity only if the margins are closely adapted to the cavus surface finish line of the preparation and there are various finish line configurations it will dictate the shape and bulk of the margins it will affect the marginal adaptation and it affects the degree of ct and there are various finish line configurations they are chamfer heavy chamfer shoulder sloped shoulder radial shoulder shoulder with a bevel and knife edge this we discussed in a separate lecture what is margin placement direct effect on the ultimate success of a restoration the margins is as smooth as possible placed in the area that can be finished well by the dentist and kept clean by the patient placed in the enamel whenever possible and should be supra gingival whenever possible and the advantages of the supra gingival margins are less potential for soft tissue damage easily prepared and finished more easily kept clean impressions are more easily made 
frustrations can easily eva evaluated at recall appointments. Then the subgingival margins is indicated in a, for aesthetics. Then in existing caries, cervical erosion or restorations that extend subgingivally and crown lengthening is not indicated. Then proximal contact area which extends to the gingival crust, additional retention is needed. Margin of a metal ceramic crown is to be hidden behind the labial gingival crust. Root sensitivity cannot be controlled by more conservative procedures such as application of dentin bonding agents. These are the various situations in which subgingival margins are indicated. Here to include an existing frustration to extend apical to the proximal contact that is the adequate proximal clearance. Okay. And to hide the metal collar of the metal ceramic crowns. This is the, this is the metal collar and to hide the metal collar of the metal ceramic crowns the subgingival margins are indicated. And the finish line should not be closer than 2 mm to the alveolar crust. Placement in this area, it will cause gingival inflammation, loss of alveolar crust height and pocket formation. And the margin adaptation, here the junction between a cemented restoration and the tooth, it is a potential site for recurrent caries. And casting which fits within 10 micrometer, porcelain margin is 50 micrometer and stepped irregular margin poor adaptation. Here the picture showing the poor preparation design, design and it is leading to the increased margin length. Smooth margin is considerably shorter than a jagged one. Okay. So a rough irregular margin is there. It makes the fabrication of accurately fitted restoration almost impossible. So accurately fitted restoration is almost impossible in the case of rough and irregular margin. And accurately fitting margin is possible only when if it is prepared smoothly. Okay. Here the chamfer margins are recommended for cast metal crowns and the lingual margin of a metal ceramic crown. This is the chamfer margin which is formed as a negative image of a round ended taper diamond. Here the chamfer margin should not be wider than half the rotary instrument used to form it. Otherwise a leap of unsupported enamel will be left. All unsupported enamel must be removed. Here the precise control of the orientation of the diamond is very important. Tilting away from the tooth creates an undercut. Okay. Now oppose here the tilting away from the tooth it creates an undercut and opposing axial preparation walls converge in an occlusal direction. Tilting toward the tooth result in an excessive convergence angle of a preparation. Here the diamond is tipped away from the path of placement resulting in an undercut. Here the diamond is tipped into the tooth too far leading to excessively tapered preparation. Okay, here the excessively tapered preparation. Here is an undercut. Coming to the occlusal consideration, here the non-replacement of missing teeth. This is the missing teeth and here there is a non-replacement of missing teeth which will lead to supra-occlusion and also a protrusive interference. Okay, in this picture it shows the protrusive interference and also supra-occlusion. Okay, here the protrusive interference, this arrow mark shows. And here the teeth reduced with the help of a trial tooth preparation and the diagnostic wax. And here the restorations with the anterior gates. Okay. Coming to the prevention of tooth fracture. Cuspid protection becomes more important as the structural durability of the cusp is com compromised. Here the intracoronal cause restoration or inlay which act as a wedge during the cementation or function. If the cusp are weakened then the fracture may occur. Here the fracture may occur. Cuspal coverage only which provides better protection but often lacks retention. Okay, here the only and this one is the complete crown which provides best protection against the fracture. It also has the best retention but it can be associated with the periodontal disease and poor aesthetics. So that is about the biological considerations. Mechanical considerations will be dealing in the next lecture. That is retention form, resistance form and the deformation. That's all for today's lecture. 
Please do like, share and subscribe my channel for more videos. And thanks for watching. Stay home, stay safe.